invited you on in the first place is I want to talk about the Trump agenda with you, given the fact that he's going to have this primetime speech to Congress. But before we get to that, these last couple of weeks uh, of Mr. Trump's first days in office have been dominated by attacks on the media and the intelligence community. And here is Chief Strategist Steve Bannon at the CPAC conference this week. They're corporatist globalist media that are adamantly opposed adamantly opposed to an economic nationalist agenda like Donald Trump has. There certainly were a lot of ists there, corporatist and globalist and nationalist, but you have said that you think that this president needs to have a kind of laser focus on his economic agenda. Does all of the, do all of these attacks on uh, the media and intelligence and opponents, does that get in the way of that message? Chris, what the problem is, is that the media continues to, you know, run a false narrative about this president. And if they would just cover him fairly and what the president said at his press conference, where he spent 77 minutes fielding questions from the media is, look, I'll take bad stories, but just report fairly and accurately on what we're doing. And they've refused to do that time and time again. We've seen front page stories in the Washington Post, in the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, which are just 100 percent factually inaccurate. And the response is, oops, we made a mistake but, or we've but, updated it and that Cora, the White House not, has denied these why things. Why not just pursue his agenda? Here's what President Trump tweeted late Friday night. Fake news media knowingly doesn't tell the truth, a great danger to our country. He may be right in that or he may be wrong on it, Corey, but how many jobs does that create? Well, well, Chris, the president is out creating jobs. We see what he's done with Boeing Corporation. We've seen what he's done with Carrier Corporation. We see time and time again he's bringing companies in saying, what can we do to create a better environment for the American business community? He's reducing regulations. He's passed an executive order that says for every new executive order, we're going to reduce two executive orders, uh, two regulations, so that businesses can grow. That's what the president's doing. He's bringing companies in to say, what can we do to grow? The media doesn't want to report that. The media wants to report false stories of the removal of Martin Luther King Jr.'s bus from the Oval Office, which we know to be factually inaccurate. They want to write a story about a story of national security, which is absolutely factually false, particularly when you have the director of national intelligence or you have the director of the CIA saying that the story that you have written has a false narrative in it and the media doesn't want to report that. They have their own agenda and this is the first president in a lifetime that has the ability to fight back through his almost 100 million people who follow him through the various mediums and social media. He has to do this to get the real story out to the American people. All right, but, but I, I want to press my point on this. Uh, there's no question that the president has signed a number of executive orders, and we've reported on all of them. But in terms of his legislative agenda, he's falling behind where other new presidents have been at the same point in their terms. And, and one of the questions I've got, particularly given the fact that he's going to get his, give his speech to Congress this week, how important is it for him, given the fact that there are some splits inside the Republican Party, to give marching orders, to give direction of where he wants to see Republicans in Congress and the House and Senate go in passing his agenda? Well, it's very important. And I think what this administration has said, and you heard from the Secretary of the Treasury, where they're looking at uh, the first full uh, tax change since 1986, the first fundamental tax change. They're hoping to get that done uh, in the coming months. We know that the president has said during his press conference that he's going to submit a plan for the full repeal and replacement of Obamacare. What we know about Obamacare, Chris, is that premiums are up over 100 percent in many of these states. Private companies are pulling out. The plans are a failure. The promises that were made to the American people of if you want your doctor, if you like your plan, you can keep it are not factually correct. His agenda is moving forward through Congress. What he has done in the first 35 or 36 days is the executive orders that didn't require the, pre the, the confirmation process or the approval of Congress. Very important. And if you look, he's put coal miners back to work. They were in the White House last week saying, thank you, Mr. President, for giving us the opportunity to get back to work every day. He's meeting with car executives. He's meeting with airline executives. What can the government do to stimulate the economy so that we're not growing at 1%, but we're growing at 4% or 5%? We finally have an OMB director, an Office of Management and Budget, who can finally look at the budget. And as the president puts together his budget, it is his, mor his moral belief that the government needs to be leaner and more efficient and more business friendly. I think that's what you'll see coming out of his budget in the but, near future. But, uh, 